Hi friends! If you're new here, welcome! In this video, I'm going to be making this gorgeous, fun, kind of cottagecore-esque summer dress. This is more of a historically inspired piece than really from any era. It's meant to be kind of timeless and something that I could wear both as a summer dress and as a shift or chemise, like an underlayer of a fantasy bounding or kind of Ren Faire outfit. So. I do have plans to make the rest of a Ren Faire outfit a little bit later. I'm gonna save that for the beginning of fall because uh, that's kind of the color scheme and the fabrics I have planned for that. This project was uh, a little bit, a little bit chaotic. I did create a pattern guide for what I ended up going with, which you can download for free at the link in the description. Uh, it's like pay as you want. I'm not asking anyone to pay for this because this is not like a, a tried and true pattern or a historical pattern or anything. This is just like what I did. So if you'd like to see that, you're welcome to go download that. Uh, but otherwise, this pattern has three pattern pieces. I wanted to do two at first, but I, I ended up needing an underarm gusset, so I added that in. So three pattern pieces, all of which are squares and rectangles. So basically you have your sleeve piece, your main body piece, and then your underarm gusset. And you cut two sleeves uh, and two main body pieces and two underarm gussets. So yeah, pretty simple. Pretty darn simple. I will say the way that I patterned this was very much affected by my fabric width and also my personal proportions. So I wanted to use the full width of the fabric to go vertically on my body. Um, and I'm using this, I used this cotton gauze, which I was a little scared to work with, and rightfully so because it is a disaster. Do not recommend. Uh, I mean, it's, it's cute, it has a fun texture, but yeah, it, it's it's a, it's pretty hard to work with. Uh, so if I make another dress like this, I will probably use something that is more tightly woven and less annoying. But anyways, this fabric has this kind of almost like striping, as you can see, and it was going along the cross grain. That's just kind of how it all bunched up when I pre-washed the fabric. So I wanted those lines to be going vertically on my body. So that kind of affected how I decided to pattern this garment. You'll see what the whole garment looks like at the end of this video, but yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about actually how I patterned this. For the main body, the one thing that I had to figure out with this piece was how much fabric I wanted to gather down. Um, so I ended up going with a little bit under four times my bust measurement for the full bust circumference of this garment. So I cut it in two pieces, so each of my pieces, the front and the back, are both twice my full bust circumference in width. So if you're confused about the numbers, I'm gonna tell you what it was with my actual measurements, so content warning measurements. My bust is about 34 inches, and 34 times four is 136. So I decided to round that down a little bit and go down to 120. Uh, so both of my panels are 60 inches wide, which is uh, a little smaller than twice my full bust circumference. So these panels are really, really wide and you'll see that as I put it together. But I decided to go with that just because I wanted to have a fairly dense gathering in the body of this garment. Um, and those panels are just the length from my bust to the full length of the garment, plus uh, seam allowance and hem allowance, and then that width. And I just made them as rectangles. So the waist just gets gathered down a little bit more, and then for the skirt, it, that's just the width of the skirt. For the sleeves, I really just measured like from here down to where I wanted the sleeve to end, plus seam allowance and hem allowance. And then for the width, I kind of just took a measuring tape and like wrapped it around my arm. I think these are about... I think my bicep is about 11 and a quarter inches right now, and the sleeve width is close to 20 inches. So yeah, and then for the underarm gussets, I think I went a little bit big with them because I did them kind of second, like I put together the sleeve and the body and then I was like, oh, I'm definitely gonna need a gusset. So I did like a finished around a six inch gusset, but I could probably have gone with closer to a four inch gusset and it would have been fine. But yeah, so let's get into construction. I constructed this not in the most ideal way. Like I said, I uh, realized that I needed a gusset after the fact, which is not how you should do this. If you're making this, I would recommend just putting the gusset in from the beginning because you're probably gonna need one. If I were to make this again, I would attach the gusset to the sleeve, quite similar to the way that I did in my pirate shirt tutorial, which I will link over here. That is an actual tutorial, not more of a recounting of what I did kind of video. I 
I laid out the front and the back and then I laid out my sleeves and as you can see there's a space between the front and the back and that's because I wanted to maximize my fabric usage and I didn't have enough width of the fabric to have the front and back pieces come all the way to the shoulder so I have them end here and then this is actually the sleeve piece. You can see this is my giant neck hole. I had to fold up my front and back pieces a little bit to get it to fit on the floor. Uh, and then I just stuck my sleeves on the side and I measured how much I wanted from here to here and then doubled that and that was how much space I left in the sleeve and then the rest of the sleeve got sewed onto the side of the front and back pieces, as you can see. And I did that with a French seam because this fabric is so incredibly prone to fraying that I just decided French seams would probably be my best bet as far as finishing. Then I just draped it over my body and saw that I needed some underarm gusset, so I cut those out and put them in and I tried to French seam them, which worked out okay. It's, the corners are a little, a little iffy, a little bulky. They look fine, they definitely look fine from afar, but like I said, I would recommend doing gussets first. So in uh, attaching my gussets and doing French seams, I also sewed down the sleeve and the side seam. So then the only raw edges that I had at this point were the ends of the sleeves because of how I had cut these pieces out. A lot of it was on the salvage, uh, which the salvages were pretty nice on this fabric luckily, so I just kind of worked with those. Uh, but I went ahead and hemmed the sleeves just so that this fabric would not continue to disintegrate into tiny little piles of thread. And then I went ahead and started to create my drawstrings. So this garment is really honestly super simple. It's a little bit tricky just because you're dealing with so much fabric and it can be a little bit annoying to, to maneuver it around a machine. But as far as like the construction, I feel like it's, it's pretty darn simple, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, I went ahead and created a little single fold kind of drawstring casing around the top because it was the salvage, so I didn't need to double fold it. Um, I probably should have taken a little bit more care around these corners. I just kind of made it a little messy and did whatever to make it work. If I was working with a fabric, again, that didn't fall apart, I would probably scoop out that line a little bit so I would have a curve to work with rather than trying to like fold under an exact 90 degree corner. Those are a little tricky. You can make it work. I made it work, uh, but it, it looks a little messy up close if you're not gathering it up. So, I mean, you are gathering it up, so it's fine, but like, yeah, I would cut it slightly as a curve. Um, whew, but anyways. I decided to use this uh, straight woven tape, I think it's a cotton tape, to use as a drawstring and my dad got this plastic drawstring turning thing for like putting drawstrings in clothes like when they fall out and I tried using it and it was kind of great. So yeah, um, that was fun. But I just put a drawstring through the top. I left it really big because I wanted to be able to still lay it relatively flat. And then I measured down how much I wanted, how much space I wanted from the neckline to my underbust drawstring. And I pinned a piece of twill tape all the way around. I did like a little hem on the ends of the twill tape. Excuse me. I did a little hem on the ends of the twill tape and then I pinned it on and sewed it around that circumference and then threaded another drawstring through and did the same thing about three inches lower for my waist. That was literally it. I was thinking about adding more details to this. I thought about adding like a lace trim on the bottom, but honestly, I really love the simplicity of this garment and I feel like it's super timeless and ethereal and it just, I'm pretty happy with it. This garment is a little bit messy, but as far as the overall feel and look of it, I feel like it really came out um, 
with the, with the kind of vibe that I wanted. So I'm happy about that. If you're wondering what I'm wearing with it in this reveal, I'm wearing the sleeveless shift that I made in my Regency undergarments. Excuse me. I am currently wearing the sleeveless uh, shift that I made in my Regency undergarments video. So I will also link that over here and enjoy. dress this up as so many different kinds of things and characters just like with accessories or you know throwing on a pair of stays throwing on an overskirt or adding jewelry adding leaves adding flowers there are so many options with this kind of as a base dress so yeah I'm super happy about that and I will see you next time bye <laughs> <laughs>